Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Braha. Welcome to the Zermed Show. On the show, we will feature local physicians and healthcare leaders who are expert in their respective field and who will share their experiences and wisdom with us. We cover a broad range of health topics on the show. And today we have Dr. Kurt Kodroff, who is an endocrinologist and also the chief quality officer for One Brooklyn Health. Also with us today is Janine Allen. Janine is a health coach at the Pierre Toussaint Family Health Center. Welcome to the show today, Dr. Kodroff, Janine. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you, Dr. Braha. We're delighted to be here. It's great to be here today because we're talking about a topic that I think many or most of our viewers are going to have some interest in because if you don't have diabetes, you know someone with diabetes, you know the complications of diabetes, and today we're really going to focus in on how One Brooklyn Health is addressing this terrible diabetes concern and illness that you know we focus on so much as physicians uh, and healthcare providers. So uh, let's start off, Janine. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get to where you are today as a health coach um, at the health center? Well, again, my name is Janine Allen. I am a medical assistant and the health coach at Pier Toussaint. Uh, a little bit of my history, my mom was a registered nurse, so that um, background of nurturing and caring really drove home to me by the example that she set. And so you're from a, a family of, of healthcare uh, providers, yes. and so you decided to join the healthcare force. Uh, what exactly do you do at the uh, Pierre Toussaint Health Center? Well, my role there is basically working one-on-one -on -one with the patients, helping them to see that the changes they need to make is driven from them. We are the support of the support, so I will do outreach, contacting them, reminding them that they have their appointments, that you have to pick up your medication, that you get that test done, and I also deal with some of the social needs that they encounter from day to day. Uh, it, goes to the lack of having funds for getting those medication or paying the bills on time. So I try to link them with community out sources to help them to stay on board with their health. So really a, a, a sort of a, a friend in the diabetes journey, yes. diabetes challenge that, that people go through from many, many aspects, the, the cost, the time, the reminders, the reminders, the reminders are so important. Yes. And then they end up seeing a physician or a provider at the health center like Dr. Kadroff. Dr. Kadroff, you're an endocrinologist, a specialist in the care of diabetes. Tell us a bit about your background. How did you become a physician and an endocrinologist? Well, I, I, I can go way back to uh, you know, 30, 40 years. I, I come from a family of physicians. I suppose that's how I entered uh, medicine in the first place. Uh, and I, I've always had a, a, an interest in endocrinology, even as a medical student. Uh, it's a field where you can make a great impact. Uh, uh, you really have to know your patients well. Uh, it's a field that involves a lot of uh, sort of holistic approaches, since uh, things like um, diet and exercise impact uh, the outcomes just as much as medications or any type of inter inter intervention. Uh, from the quality perspective, I think what's always fascinated me is the importance of good teamwork. And uh, in the world of uh, taking care of people who are living with diabetes, uh, it really only can be done as a team. So focusing on diabetes really brings, uh, for me, together these two interests, creation of a team, optimizing the team-based care, and then an interest in how we approach patients uh, in a very holistic way. Right. So you, you bring up the word team, which, uh, as we all learned in medical school, taking care of a diabetic patient, like you mentioned, re requires their primary doctor, sometimes an endocrinologist, their family, what they're eating at home. And I hear now that you have a diabetes center of excellence here at One Brooklyn Health. And that sounds pretty fantastic. Um, tell us what that means, what, what a diabetes center of excellence is. Yeah, I, I think at, at, at its uh, essence is to have all the components that uh, patients would need to have uh, enable them to achieve their optimal health. So part of it is personnel and part of it is technology. So let's just start with the personnel. Uh, at our center, we have uh, an endocrinologist. Uh, uh, I serve in that role. Janine is our health coach. 
who is part of a lot of the social determinants and the connection between the center and a community-based organizations. We have a certified diabetes educator who is a, a nurse uh, who has a special certification in how to educate pa patients around diabetes. We have a nurse practitioner who's there, who's uh, specialized in not just uh, 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 the medication management, but diabetes technology. We have a PharmD uh, who is expert in managing the patients. We have a behavioral health specialist who can help with patients who are uh, stressed. Uh, we have a nutritionist uh, who uh, is available. And then we have other, you know, we have our medical residents, our great administrative staff, uh, and that all these people come together from a personnel standpoint to manage these patients. From a technological standpoint, uh, for the center to truly be excellent, we really had to invest in technology. So we have, among other things, we have a retina, retinal scanner. Uh, so patients can come in, we can take a picture of their retina, goes to a board certified ophthalmologist and we can get a very quick turnaround to, to look at retina health. We have point of care hemoglobin A1C testing. Uh, so we can learn immediately what someone's hemoglobin A1C is. And we avail ourselves with a lot of um, continuous glucose monitoring, insulin pump technology, uh, and that not the uh, least uh, of which is uh, from a technological standpoint is the use of our EMR, which is, and especially the use of the patient portal. There needs to be a lot of connection with our patients. The patient portal allows our, our patients to communicate with us seven days a week, um, and this Collectively, the technology plus the, the, the great team we have really constitutes this center of excellence. Yeah, it really sounds like the dream team of diabetes care there. The, the center of excellence is something new? It's, it's new. We used to have uh, pieces of it, uh, but uh, one of the, uh, you know, the background of really forming that really emerged out of uh, the first year of the uh, COVID pandemic. Um, and we recognized early on in COVID that uh, people who were living with diabetes or even had pre-diabetes, uh, obesity, um, were having worse outcomes. So early on, back in 2020, it became very apparent we had to pull together this team. Uh, you know, I for, forgot some of the important team members. We also have an on-site podiatry team. Uh, we have an on-site cardiologist. We have an on-site nephrologist uh, that are there. Um, so we surround ourselves with those specialties uh, that would be necessary to completely and holistically take care of people with diabetes. So this is really born out of the fact that patients were not getting into the doctor's offices, not coming back for their care, and then you developed this new center for excellence in diabetes care and now, where can patients find this center? How can they get online or how can they call? What's the first step someone can take if they have diabetes to get well, enrolled? Well, we're, uh, we're located uh, very conveniently. We're located at the corner of Utica and Eastern Parkway. Uh, the exact address is 1110 Eastern Parkway if somebody's interested. Um, and that's right at a transportation hub. There's the what is it, the, the three and the four, uh, the 46 bus, there's some other bus that goes through there, I can't remember the name, but it's really at a transportation hub. Uh, so it's very, virtually anyone in Brooklyn can get there with maybe one uh, exchange or, or another. Um, we have a call center that people can access to, to make appointments. Um, people who are already in the portal actually can connect to us directly through the portal. Uh, most of our patients come through referrals, and about uh, maybe 40% come from within the system. So once a patient arrives at the center, uh, Janine, they, they check in, it's their first time coming to a Diabetes Center of Excellence, the, the one here at One Brooklyn Health. What's their first steps? What's their first experiences at the center? So they're greeted at the entrance by our well um, curated security and he would direct them to where they need to go. That's to the BAs at the front and they warmly uh, greet them, check them in. While they wait, then they coordinate with the PCTs. That's for first hands-on um, care for them and this is where they get their 
fighters get comfortable because sometimes visiting the doctors it's very emotional and stressful for a lot of patients so the staff there really calms them down and help them to realize that this is a process we're here to care for you and it will go through smooth and as the visit goes on if the, the once the doctor or the residents is through with them if there's a need for the health coach or the social worker then we will follow up as needed to continue the care for the patient and this starts their journey with you at the at the center. Yes. So is this open to any diabetic patient? Is it certain diabetics, type one, type two, poorly controlled, well controlled? Um, what should our viewers know about who qualifies to really come to a center like this? That's a good question. The, the answer is anybody uh, is welcome to be seen there uh, from pre-diabetes uh, and including people with more advanced complications. Uh, so we see um, lots of patients who are living with type 1 diabetes versus type 2. We see people who have pre-diabetes. We have education classes, actually, that Janine runs to prevent diabetes, which is even a better place to start than after the disease uh, develops. So uh, there, there is no, no one who wouldn't benefit uh, uh, because the approach may be different. Uh, early disease, pre-disease, or more advanced complications, but but uh, everyone is, is, is welcome. Now, at the center, Janine, once they meet with the physician and they're given a list of, you know, instructions to go get this x-ray or this blood test or to go start this medicine, uh, if there's someone like you helping to guide the patients? Yes. And definitely. can it all be done within the One Brooklyn Health System or even at the center itself? Yes, definitely. Oftentimes I would be pulled in to walk that patient through the process and what they need to do. We try to make sure that the appointments are made before they leave the appointments. Uh, some, if we don't have certain testing like getting a mammogram or stuff, we curate with the outside um, vendors to make sure that those appointments are made. But they're definitely help to make sure you pick up your um, medication at the pharmacy and also your follow-up appointments, which are very important. So they are help. So it sounds like the patients really are, are you know, swept up by this team of providers that they're helped through all the steps, which is really a, a tough part of diabetes care is, is compliance and adherence to a lot of the recommendations and the challenges can be finding parking or, or transportation. So it sounds like you've got your bases covered here. The center sounds like such a wonderful idea and, it, and I kind of see where it came from. This must cost money. This must take a lot of resources. How well, did you put this together? And, and it's an excellent question. Helped? And, and um, this leads me into another great partner that we have at that center in terms of the team. And that's the relationship we have with a community-based organization called Health People. Uh, Health People, uh, their center is in the Bronx, but they have a really strong presence in Brooklyn, specializes in teaching lay people or peers to educate other patients. And the, the centerpiece of our diabetes self-management class is actually at, the, at Pier Toussaint, led by our patients, or uh, community members who have been specially trained. Um, the way we uh, engaged uh, health people was with some charitable donations. So we, we have a, a grant from uh, Roots and Wings. We have a grant from the Altman Foundation, the New York Community Trust. Uh, and we wanted to be very clear that we used these funds for purposes that directly and palpably benefited the community. So the bulk of the effort, the use of that funds is on the self-management training classes and the diabetes technology. So the retina scan, the point of care A1C testing, the use of continuous glucose monitors, a lot of that supported through the grant and then the education component through help people is supported through the grant. We already had some of the more clinical pieces and of course, you know, we have Janine was there before the grant and we worked together just as well and excitedly as we do now. But we needed to wrap around these other services to really make it complete. So the Diabetes Center of Excellence sounds like an amazing team approach to diabetes. For the people watching today who either know they have diabetes and hopefully will check in with you. But what about the viewers today from some educational points about diabetes? 
What are some of the signs that someone may have diabetes and may consider coming to get checked for diabetes at the Center for Excellence? Sure, there's, there's a number of signs. There's, there's uh, uh, sort of the, the classic signs uh, of el an elevated, and, and you know, just the definition of diabetes is really an elevated blood sugar, and there's different causes of that, but that's sort of the common uh, pathway. So a very common symptom is lots of thirst and lots of urination. That's sort of a classic two of the signs that people have diabetes. But there's some other signs. Uh, people can feel fatigued. Uh, they can have gum disease. They can um, have uh, unexplained weight loss. Uh, they can have wounds that won't heal. Uh, they can have blurred vision. Uh, and so th there's a lot of very nonspecific sort of general signs of somebody just feeling tired, not doing well, not thriving in their life. Uh, anybody who feels that way should at least be screened for diabetes as a potential cause. Classic signs though, lots of urine, lots of thirst. So drinking too much because you're thirst beyond belief and peeing too much uh, are clear signs of, that would or be maybe a, very clear signs of diabetes. Be a warning sign, yes. Once someone has diabetes, what are the problems that can develop, especially if it goes untreated? What are the most common sort of complications that one may suffer from? It's a, a great question. Uh, the one thing that has to be uh, made clear is that it is a, it is a serious disease. Uh, it's a serious disease that can be managed, however. And so we always want to see people as early on in their uh, um, diagnosis as possible. But what are we concerned about? We're, we are concerned about, as you said, the complications. What are the complications of diabetes? Well, uh, high blood sugar over time, untreated, uh, can adversely affect people's vision, uh, something called diabetic retinopathy. Uh, we can have uh, abnormal uh, vasculature in the eye or the blood vessels become abnormal, the nerves actually become abnormal too. It can affect your kidneys, the most common cause of end-stage renal disease leading to dialysis is, is diabetes. It can affect the nerve endings. Uh, this can present as pain or tingling. Uh, it can also develop into numbness um, and where people cannot feel their feet and therefore they're at risk of ulceration or uh, stepping on something and not knowing it and having a foreign body. Uh, so all the eye disease, the kidney disease, and the nerve disease go together. Uh, also, uh, if you have diabetes, you're at increased risk for heart attacks and strokes. Um, and so we have to be especially aggressive in improving blood pressure, improving cholesterol, making sure we're necessary people are on an aspirin, uh, to prevent heart attacks and strokes in addition to just simply lowering the blood sugar. So these, these terrible side effects of diabetes though, if managed properly, we can really reduce the risk of these. Absolutely. It's a treatable disease. This is a, a treatable and manageable disease. The earlier, the better. Uh, if you take something like kidney disease, early on, uh, people who have uh, kidney disease related to their diabetes, it can be reversed. Mm -hmm. Uh, the farther it goes, though, the more difficult that becomes. And at some point, uh, it can't be reversed. Uh, so we always like to see people early on. Uh, the great news is that there is now many treatments for uh, kidney disease related to diabetes. Well, yeah, let's focus on that for a few minutes, because I think for most people out there, when they think diabetes, all they think of is insulin. And so what are some of the treatment options, especially what are some of the newer treatment options that you know, our viewers might be interested in to know about. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, I, I, in, insulin is still a, a really critical intervention for many people. It's, it's mandatory for people who don't make insulin type one diabetes, but it's often used for type two, but there's a lot of newer treatment. Uh, there's treatments that people, uh, there's a, a whole class of drug called a glucagon-like peptide one. These are medicines you take uh, usually by injection uh, and they are helpful in so far is that they uh, are very powerful in enabling people to lose weight. Uh, they also happen to, in long-term long -term studies, uh, have shown to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease. So people who take these medicines who are at high risk for cardiovascular disease have fewer heart attacks and strokes. There's a, a whole um, group of medicines called uh, sodium glucose-like transporter inhibitors two inhibitors. 
And what they do is interfere with your ability to hold on to sugar in your urine. So your sugar urine gets very sweet. But what it turns out that does is it decreases pressure in the kidneys and lowering that pressure tends to reduce the risk of diabetic kidney disease. One of the consequences of, of using those medicines also is that it improves the outcomes for heart failure. That was really wasn't the intent of the medicine, but it turns out that people who take these medicines and have heart disease have fewer admissions to the hospital for heart failure. Um, so these newer medicines are, are really interesting is that they have more than one purpose. Purpose number one is to lower the sugar. Purpose number two is that it may help people at high risk for heart disease and kidney disease. You know, patients always ask, well, how can I prevent a heart attack and how can I prevent a stroke? How can I prevent these terrible complications? These are all available at, at the Center of Excellence. Yeah, th these are medicines we would prescribe. We don't, we, we're not a pharmacy, so, uh, but we would assess the patient and determine what the best treatment is. Uh, uh, as Janine describes sort of the movement of the patient as they come in, a uh, critical piece of that first visit is where there may be a gap in care, where there may be an opportunity to intervene. And our, that first visit is really what we're trying to calculate is where may your care be improved to enable optimal health? Uh, and that includes both the physiology care, like blood pressure being too high or cholesterol being too high, and the social uh, aspects of care. Someone with food insecurity, housing difficulties, this is where Janine comes in, who can connect people with community resources and try to address the social needs. Sometimes um, one of the great needs is just someone to talk to about the burden of having a chronic disease. And uh, Jeanine also intervenes on that in, in that way. Um, it is, uh, it is, there's a lot of stress uh, and uh, depression sometimes associated with managing your diabetes and so to do it alone uh, would be very difficult. Janine and her team can intervene with some health coaching and support. Uh, the self-management classes, which are also a social event, uh, can involve people socially. Uh, and social isolation is a risk factor for a bad outcome, so we like people involved in that. It really sounds amazing what you're doing here, this Diabetes Center of Excellence at One Brooklyn Health. Uh, Janine, what are some of the, the worst uh, barriers? What, what, what are the things that you have to break down in order to get these patients in the first time and back the second time? What are the biggest challenges that you're facing? Trust. Tell us about that. Because it's, it's important with the, uh, the patients that we're dealing with that they really understand that we care and they will hold you to task. They really want to make sure I'm telling you all this, I'm going to get results. So building that trust with them, that's number one. That's key to forming this relationship. And once they realize that we're there for them and we follow through with whatever, it is probably just calling the pharmacy to make sure, hey, do you have the medication for patient so-and-so? Making it a little easier for them. They could just walk in and pick up. Then the next time they'll come, oh, Miss Allen, I got my medication, so this is what is happening. So automatically that foot is in, they will return and share whatever obstacle that's needing them for us to work through. Yeah, I, th I think with anything in healthcare, trust is, mm -hmm. is really the first step. And so you build that trust with the patients, they come back to see both of you and, and the entire team. What's your best advice for someone out there today watching who is afraid of developing diabetes? If, in our last minute or so, what are some ways to prevent developing this terrible disease? That's an excellent question. The real mainstay for type two diabetes prevention is all the, the lifestyle uh, components. Uh, we are, one of our uh, primary purposes is to educate patients on lifestyle interventions. Um, exercise is absolutely critical. Uh, we know there's a lot of people who have sedentary jobs. Um, if you spend your day behind a computer, uh, we advise people to get up every hour, work, walk around, do some light exercise for five or six minutes. 
uh, we really recommend that uh, 30 minutes of physical activity every single day. Um, there's a huge portfolio of opportunities for exercise. So the type of exercise we may encourage for someone who's 22 years old is going to be different than who's 85 years old. But activity at any age and any ability is really, really critical. And then, of course, there's uh, nutrition. Uh, part of the reason we have such a epidemic of diabetes is that uh, our food sources have changed over the last 50 years. We, there's a lot of very calorically dense food, fast food, food of very low nutritional value. So the best way to approach that is to think about food that is natural, that it comes out of the ground, lots of fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, nuts and seeds, cooking with olive oil, avoiding high fat dairy, avoiding bakery goods. Uh, we have, you know, as I mentioned, we have a nutritionist who can go into exquisite detail yeah. uh, in, a, in a very culturally sensitive way about what people can choose. But it really comes down to healthy eating, lots of exercise. Back to the basics, really. The, the basics. Yeah. And then the other thing that is very, very challenging, and Janine is a, an expert on this, is managing stress. Uh, a lot of these social factors that impact diabetes, housing instability, food insecurity, financial instability, um, not having a, you know, a safe place to live, um, really in, impacts uh, the outcome. Uh, and uh, you know, the community-based organizations and anything we can do to relieve some of that stress yeah. uh, can also help. So it's really a, a global approach to diabetes. It's a global approach to preventing diabetes. And the Center of Excellence here at One Brooklyn Health for Treating Diabetes sounds like an amazing place, and I wish you all good luck. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. having you both. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and your interest in the show and your desire to become more involved and educated. I invite you to visit our website at www.zermed.com and check out our tools and connect with us on social media. You can also call us at 718-510- 2103. Please stay well and be safe. Goodbye.